Yeah, hello, welcome to Have A Go and I'm Alan. Today we're going to continue working on the carriage casting here. We're going to finish tapping this hole back here, so I've got a new set of taps. Then we're going to smooth off this top part and mount the ways for the cross slide to go on. Hopefully it'll make a bit more sense as I go along. But for now we'll back off the gib screws. So we can take the casting off. In case you're wondering where those grey gloves I picked up got to, I wound up getting rid of them because a splinter of metal actually got caught in the cotton underneath the rubber which made putting them on rather horrible. Right, this is the new set of taps I picked up. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Okay. They've got three separate sizes for each size of tap. And they aren't different pitches either. The idea is that you start off with a small tap that cuts, yeah, maybe 50% of the threads, but doesn't do a thorough job. And after that you run the second tap through, which will cut the threads to 75% or so. And after that you use the last tap, which will finish forming the threads. This means that you need less tool pressure, I'm told. also comes with a cute little tap wrench. So we'll, we'll give it a go, see what it's like. Right, M6, and we'll start with the beginner um, one tap. That is amazingly easy. I hope I didn't booger it up with the bed. Tap. Right, number two tap. Ah, this one's cutting. And this, I think, is the finishing tap. I heard somewhere that when you're using chucks on drills and the like you should never put cheetah bars on the ends of the handle for the chuck because the, the chuck, um, the arms on the chuck key are designed to produce just enough torque in, on the chuck itself. If you use cheetah bars to extend the chuck key arms then you'll be putting a lot more torque onto the chuck than what it's actually designed to be able to deal with. I don't know or I presume there's some truth to that but I don't know how much. Ooh, that went very nicely. It takes longer but The act of tapping actually produces little chips of metal, believe it or not. So I'm just cleaning those up. Some of them were underneath the hole itself, others fell to the bottom of the channel there. But either way, I do not want little flakes of metal collecting right on my slide base. Beautiful. Isn't it nice when things just work? Now the reason why this middle screw is different to these ones is that this middle screw is not intended to hold the jib in, in good tension with the ways. What this is meant for 
is when you want the carriage to stay firmly in one position on the lathe bed. Like if you're doing a facing cut across the surface of the material. Because if the carriage is not securely stuck there, there's a possibility it can actually move backwards during the cut. Which will give you a dome on the face of the part you're turning rather than a perfectly flat yeah, face. So this middle screw doesn't tension the gib, it pushes down hard on it to clamp the carriage in place. So, very happy with this new set of taps. You know it's good when it comes in a little metal tin. <laughs> Right, going to test the front edge, so take this off. Right, I've got the bluing compound on this, so Right, I know it's a bit hard to see, but where the paint has been scraped away on the edge here, where there is no paint, means I have to scrape it. Why didn't I do that to start with? That was just from running the stone along it. This is after I wiped it clean with the glass cleaner. I'm going to have to make sure that I do a good clean of the bed after I'm finished with this. Because there's probably going to be leftover bits of dust from the stone on it. And I do not want stone grit getting into my ways and grinding them down even further. Next order of business is to flatten this part. Oh goody. I'll take the jib strip out intentionally this time. Right, the reason for this setup is that this plate here has to be at 90 um, degrees to the ways precisely. If it's not, then bad things will happen. So, this is the machinist square, and using this. the angle line here to 90 degrees yep. now if I bring this up here then obviously I can't set this to be parallel with this just by running it up to it so I need another set of parallel things you know, a spacer effectively. So, this offcut has been very useful.
Now it may seem like I'm being paranoid here, but it's very, very important that this be at 90 degrees. Didn't quite drill all the way through, but that's okay. Now it is drilled all the way through. Post in the comments, am I being just OCD about constantly brushing and shavings off, or is it a good thing? I'm leaning towards good thing. Get the set of good taps again. Right, so now we just have to drill the focus last hole there. Tap this one, number one tap. Number two tap. The metal's thick enough that the tap's not going all the way through, but it's okay. At some point I am going to have to go through and trim off those jolly shims. Is there a hazard right now? Drill out the second hole to 6mm and then countersink both of them. I'm using M6 by 12 um, countersunk bolts for these. Not to get philosophical on you, but I think one of the things that I really like about this whole Gingari exercise is how self-sufficient everything is. Because, I mean, it's not like where you buy a set of castings um, from a kit supplier, and if you muck up those castings, you're snookered. Whereas with this, is very much, if, what's that, you mucked up a casting? Well, there's a learning experience, so just try again. Now I like how self-sufficient the Gingari method is. You just start with basics. You don't have to order from a particular company. You just order things that can, you can get anywhere. Yeah, you know, jelly bean parts. Alright, so that's most of this um, casting done. So I just have to build the stuff that will stack on top of it. And also the apron that will hang underneath it as well. But that's for another day. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.